Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm joined again today by Tom Benson of Mitrix Bio. And Tom, you've been talking quite a lot about the sort of David and Goliath battle, as you see it, that's going on in the, the longevity field. So could you maybe just kind of expand on that a bit for us? Well, there's a lot of different causes of aging that have been proposed, 15 different types of aging hallmarks. But we think that the biggest root of aging by far is degeneration, de degeneration of DNA. Okay. Now, there's two types of DNA. That's, that's the thing to remember. There's the nuclear DNA, which is the giant DNA. There's one per cell. But there's also separate little strands of mitochondrial DNA. And if you have, you might have 100 mitochondria per cell, and each of those mitochondria could have five mitochondrial DNA. So you've got one giant nuclear DNA, and you have 500 tiny little circular mitochondrial DNA that are completely different. They, they, they are passed down directly from your mother. They're ancient. Um, they only, uh, they, they do some very, very important things in that cell. Those mitochondrial DNA are what are, what are basically running that mitochondria and causing it to produce energy. And if the mitochondrial DNA get damaged, then the energy level of the mitochondria is going to decline. Okay. So um, there's, there's been this very big focus in the field, in the longevity field on nuclear DNA, uh, epigenetic damage as a cause of aging. And, and I think that's an extremely big issue. It's absolutely critical. But I think we need to remember that, again, that's not the only DNA issue. There's also the mitochondrial DNA, which is also degrading. So I do think that there is a bit of a, of a David versus Goliath battle here, or maybe you could call it a race, between these two types of DNA, both of which need to be repaired, both of which are important to aging. And um, we'll see, you know, Who's the first to get to some kind of big milestone? Now, of course, I want to say I am a mitochondrial DNA CEO of a company. So, of course, I'm going to hold this opinion. But nevertheless, that's, that's our, our belief within our company. So, Tom, why do you think there's more emphasis on epigenetic versus mitochondrial DNA? And, and what's the source of that opinion? Well, I think that epigenetic programming and uh, genetics, nuclear genetics, is, is absolutely a fascinating field. And it's, it's been the cornerstone of new discovery in medicine and in biology for the last 40 years or more. It's uh, gotten enormous amount of attention. It's gotten enormous amounts of, of funding, deservedly so. And so, of course, it's a natural thing that, 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 that all that focus by all those researchers would would move over into the longevity field. There's just a lot of people who know about this concept. Mitochondria on the other side, on the other hand, have, have never had that kind of big audience, that kind of big support team. Mitochondria have always been considered, uh, you know, kind of a, just an organelle. And, and really only in the last 10, 15 years do we understand that mitochondria are much more sophisticated and the body's treatment of them is much more sophisticated than we thought. And so it is growing very quickly, but it's just, there's just not as many people and not as much investor understanding and not as much institutional understanding of the importance of mitochondrial DNA as there is of nuclear DNA. So what about other types of longevity interventions? I guess there are between, you know, nine to 15, depending on your point of view. So, so where do you feel that this fits into the picture? So yes, there was just a, a paper a few weeks ago that increased the number of hallmarks of aging from nine to 12 or 15. And uh, these are all very important. And we're talking about, you know, senolytics, um, waste disposal, uh, reduction of, of stem cells and so forth. Um, these are all these different issues. The question is, are these actually causes of aging or are they just symptoms of aging? And that's the thing that I think we haven't really sorted out yet. For example, if we, um, if we do experiments with mitochondria in the immune system, which we've done a bunch of these in the last six months, where we put new mitochondria into an elderly degraded immune system, 
what we found was that pretty much kaboom, you know, that immune system went from being elderly to being young just when we put in new mitochondria. We didn't have to do any of those other things. Just by providing more mitochondria with better energy supplies, like putting a new freshly charged battery in your electric drill, it goes faster and drills deeper. And that's been the case with the immune system tests that we've done over and over again. So in that case, all these other factors really just did not come into play. So we have to ask ourselves, if that's the case with the immune system, and I think we're gonna, we may find that we're gonna find something similar in the retina. I think that they've, they're finding that there's a lot of importance for mitochondria in degenerative, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. If we find that just by increasing the energy is all you need, then maybe you have to ask yourself, maybe aging isn't that complicated, okay? Maybe all these other things really are just secondary symptoms. Maybe if we just provide new mitochondria, that will reverse aging in many, many different parts of the body. Uh, maybe not all of them. Um, I'm sure there's going to be cases where mitochondria by themselves will not be enough. And of course, we have tons of work to do. So this isn't something that we can make any any confident, you know, strong statements. But but you again, you've got to ask yourself: Is it maybe it's simple? Maybe it's just more energy. And those are, that's the question that we're asking ourselves. Maybe senescence, for example, is really just lack of energy to keep the cell active. If we put in new mitochondria, will those senescent cells go back to being active cells? Okay. What about stem cell depletion? Well, there has been research that has shown that stem cell depletion is, is can be due to lack of uh, a sufficient mitochondria to give that stem cell the energy it needs to act as a stem cell. So how do you think this is going to resolve itself, Tom? And do you have any sort of big predictions for the next five years? Well, I mean, of course, nobody knows ultimately. And again, you know, I'm a mitochondria person. So of course I'm biased. I believe that mitochondria are the, are the best low-hanging fruit, best target for longevity right now. But I do want to say that we have a we have a term that we use in our company. We call it the first law of longevity. And it goes like this. If something is that easy to do, then evolution would have done it 200 million years ago. Okay. We don't think that most of these simple solutions are really going to do that much. If you've got dietary supplements or using an infrared light on your skin or doing some simple drugs, um, and a lot of people are trying these things, I think all of those things are good for health. Maybe they'll get you to 100 years old. But people have been doing these sorts of things for, for thousands of years. You know, you get the bottom line is nobody's really made it beyond 100 on a reliable basis, with a few exceptions. Most of the time, the body's DNA structure, both the nuclear DNA and the mitochondrial DNA is degenerating. No matter what you do, there is a certain minimum level of degeneration. And by the time you reach about 95, 100 years old, if you're lucky, that's as long as it's going to go. If we want to go beyond that, if we want to get another 30 years of lifespan, or we turn that around and say, oh, well, we want our bodies to go back to being, go, if we're 80, we want to make our bodies 50 years old. So we want to gain health, 30 years of health span either one of those things, that's going to take major, um, a, a major intervention, not something simple. It's going to be something where we're going to have to create some sort of product in the outside world because our bodies can't do it. Our bodies are contained systems. They are as good as they can get. We are going to need to go to an external energy source. And of course, that's what we're doing in our company. We're working with using an external bioreactor to grow mitochondria in very large quantities that otherwise your body could not create and inject them in from the outside. So it's a, it's technology and it's significant technology and a lot of the energy and effort that's going to go into that. That's where I think the longevity field is going to have to go to really make any of these big steps. Well, Tom, that's great. Thanks for joining us again today. My pleasure. Yeah.